Hi, and welcome to LB0 Fox India Norwegian Ham Ventures. I'm Morton LB0 Fox India. And it shouldn't come to a surprise to you guys that I like building antennas. I like experimenting with antennas. I like trying different antennas for parks in the air. So a couple of days ago, my friend Walt K4OGO over at Coastal Waves and Wires released his design for the K4OGO Coastal 20 no radial vertical antenna. And I talked to Walt a little bit and I figured I'm going to try to build this and I'm going to show a new ham how to build this antenna from scratch and how to use it. I'm going to use my eBay 91 uh, on, on for this and uh, uh, we'll see how that works. And as you can see over there, the antenna is, is pretty simple. It consists of an upper driven element, which is 17 and a half feet. That is 5.35. 34 5.34 meters to be exact and the bottom counterpoise element is uh, three feet or 9.14 centimeters 91 and a half centimeters uh doesn't have to be exact for a random wire antenna and this should work fine for every band from 20 and up with a tuner uh, this is an antenna you, you will need a tuner for it but um, I'm going to build this and this is going to be a two part series. First of all, today we're going to build the antenna. I'm going to show you new hams how to measure up and how to cut it. And uh, then I'm going to take it out for parks and the air activation for, for episode two. And we're going to see how good this antenna performs. And it probably will perform pretty well. I've seen Walt's video. I'll put a link somewhere up here for, for that so you can see Walt's video on it. And shouldn't be too hard so let's go ahead let's move on to the workbench over there and uh, do some cutting some soldering and uh, make this antenna and then we'll draw some come back here and draw some conclusions on the build so we moved to the workshop here and we got a couple of things we got this electric installation cable uh, two and a half square millimeters more than good enough for what we're doing we got a soldering iron over here. We got a heat gun, some heat shrink, some ring terminals, a little bit of tools just to get started. So first thing we're going to do is measure up the first element, which is going to be 91 and a half centimeter, the radial element. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Got that cut. We're going to just coil that up and leave it to the side for a little bit. And now for the driven element, we're going to measure that up and that's going to be 5.33 meters. So let's just measure this up. All measured up and let's coil this as well so we don't have a, so much loose wire to take care of. And there's a kink in the cable so we better get that out. This wire is a little bit stiff but uh, it's still usable for this project. It's part of the use whatever you got philosophy that you should have as a ham. So we got that coiled up and um, we're going to do some soldering. So our next step is to put some ring terminals on the wire. And uh, We don't have a lot of colors to choose from, so both are going to be blue. The length will tell them apart. The first thing we're going to do is take some wire and uh, uh, put on the ring terminals. And I like to put some heat shrink on just for, for making it look good. Let's see what colors we have. Let's put a piece of red heat shrink for the uh, driven element. And 
piece of blue heat shrink for the uh, counterpoise element. Now we're going to take our wire strippers, just put the wire in, strip off a bit, and we'll do the same with the next wire here. There we go. Let's cut the heat shrink in two. We don't need such a big piece for it. And a good piece of advice is to slide in the heat shrink before we do anything with the ring terminal. And I like to use helping hands. And uh, that's one done. And the cable is, uh, is crimped. I like to crimp and solder. Let's solder it on. And please do feel free to comment on my soldering technique. I'm no expert. But this isn't a complicated soldering job either. And always clean your iron a little bit before going ahead. Put some solder on for heat transfer. And then just apply a good amount of it when you're soldering ring terminals. That's one wire done. We're going to put this to the side and do the next one. And we actually forgot something on this one. see if it's possible to just slide it over and it is. I chose a big enough a heat shrink to make this happen. Let's bring out the heat gun. That's one done. Let's do the next one as well. So both ends heat shrinked and good. And the bone for this project is the same eBay 91 Anon as I've showed you. The counterpoise goes on here and the uh, driven element goes on here. So that's about it. I'm gonna call up the cables, make it neat and nice for some testing, uh, probably tomorrow. And uh, you'll get that video uh, in the next episode. I'll be back in the studio in a little while. Or what seems for you as right now, but for me, a little while. So back in the studio, and this was a pretty easy build. Anyone can do it pretty much. Uh, even if you're a new ham and you want to experiment with a different HF antenna. So um, we're going to take the antenna out to a park in a day or two and see how it performs. So I'll be back then with the results. But if you look at Walt's video, um, I'm pretty sure it will perform. So thank you for watching. Um, 
please do like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to support the channel, there are a couple of ways down below. You can either buy me a coffee or you can support the channel on Patreon. Or just click that like and subscribe button. Every little bit helps. So thank you for watching. I'll be back soon, 7-3.